by asking, what are the major effects of climate change uh, on <coughs> rainfall pattern and uh, agricultural productivity in Nigeria today? And what role does climate information services play in this regard? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, as you would know, Africa's agriculture is climate dependent, especially in Nigeria. We do not have a um, well-developed irrigation system. That's why you find that in Nigeria, people are seasonally unemployed. So when it's not rainy season, perhaps 70% of our farmers are jobless. You know? Um, so, but over the millennia, we have learned to cope with this. But as things change, when our people can no longer predict and say, oh, by so so months I should clear my land, by so so months it's going to rain, Something that they almost took for granted in the past, uh, over time it has changed. We can never really predict when the rain is going to start. All our old understanding, uh, things have changed. And the implication of that is that farmers are now unable to you know, properly plan. And even when they think that they have adequate uh, understanding of their system, their ecosystem, too, they often run into debt. Some of them even commit suicide. Because imagine when you have taken loan over like with cooperative money, you have taken hundreds of thousands to clear the land, to buy seedlings, to plant, and then the rain refused to come because the onset is what has happened is just a false rain. Uh, and that's not the only thing. You have those who are doing livestock who sometimes the heat stress. You know, farmers need information regularly, timely. To let them know, if I'm a poultry farmer, for instance, where should I stock? Where should I feed? Where will my um, um, livestock have less immunity? Where do I need to boost their immunity? A lot of information they need to, to you know, to, uh, for proper production. And the implication for us as a nation is that food is scarce. Farmers have told us now that even right now that the cost of a crate of egg has gone between 1,009 and 2,003. Now it's going to get worse by February and by April. Why? Many of them are about to you know, sell out their layers. But beyond that, the cost of grain, the cost of maize, the cost of feed for their uh, livestock is killing. So things are going to get worse. And you know, children are going back to school. The moment they return to school, they are going to need you know, egg and what have you. So uh, a lot of things are happening. Um, Climate change, unfortunately, is exacerbating other big challenges that our agricultural sector have faced. We, we have issues of poor knowledge, issues of poor technology uh, application in our agriculture. We have issues of farmers not getting adequate extension support. That is something that we cannot say enough of. No matter what information you have, the people who deliver this information to the farmers not just by communicating it like a gist or rumor, but with also information as to what to do. Because it's not enough to tell somebody that, oh, flood is coming. You should also be able to tell them anytime there is going to be flood, this is where we move to, this is what we do. So you need the extension workers. Nigeria's agricultural sector is poorly, very poorly uh, under service in terms of extension, in terms of access to market information, even in terms of access to loan. No bank wants to give you any loan now without proper climate information. No insurance wants to insure you not knowing what is going to happen because they know if they give you a few millions and you plant at the all. So a lot of things depend on us having timely, um, appropriate, accessible climate information. And uh, in Nigeria, we have an agency that is uh, given the responsibility to at least gather the data process the data and make the information available. But that agency cannot work in isolation. Other stakeholders, the State Ministry of Agri, the Federal Ministry of Agriculture, uh, and I'm just talking about the service they provide, that NIMET provide for the agri sector. They provide for the health sector, they provide for the uh, works department, they provide for the aviation sector. But the one that is concerning food security, where they support the food production system, food distribution system, is that they provide agrometeorological information. That this information, when they provide them, we need other stakeholders, especially at the state level, at the local government level, to take ownership, to run with the information, to make sure that they plan appropriately with it, to make sure that they advise farmers appropriately with it, and also for our research institutions, our universities, to now provide responses for the challenges that have been put up 
as a result of climate change. Responses, for instance, in terms of if you ask farmers that um, there's going to be a lot of rain and there might be flooding, uh, you need flood resistant uh, varieties. How are they going to get it? Okay. You, if the rain is going to be sparse this year, uh, you're going to need drought resistant or early yielding. Different requirements. So who is taking this information and on the basis of it, uh, producing the knowledge product as well as the um, agricultural input that farmers require? There is a serious break along the uh, value chain for that. And, and this is why we need as a nation to take seriously providing climate information service, providing early warning system to the agricultural sector and to every sector and to take action on climate change. Now, considering the fact that agricultural activities are time dependent and uh, with delays, it can cause uh, significant drops in yields and uh, revenues. Uh, what has been your assessment of uh, farmers' utilization of agro meteorological services in Nigeria, especially the information provided by Nanimit? So the information is still very poor. I mean, the, the utilization of the information is still very poor. And you cannot blame the farmers, many of them, even while we, we, we are gathered here, so many people are learning of so many products of NIMET, you know, for the first time. And, you know, NIMET in the past few years have been intensifying their reach in terms of reaching, but really, if, it, 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 it's beyond the mandate of one agency. There are others, and that is why we, 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 we spend a lot of money in this country and don't get the right value, the right result. When NIMET is done with providing its own services, and is ready to provide technical support to other agencies. Those ones, for instance, you imagine we have a national orientation agency that has offices across local government. So NIMET can work with the national orientation. You have, in every state of this country, you have a federal TV, a federal radio, a state TV, a state radio. So you, that is a lot of resources through which you can give daily, timely information to farmers. And also, uh, the use of climate information is not just about getting the information. Some people need to first get that information, plan with it, as a result of it, make certain policy interventions, create programs that will help to optimize the advantage from the information. You imagine in 2012, when we had the white water flooding, um, even though Nimet had told us earlier the year that there's going to be a lot of rain, the hydrological services department have also said there's going to be flooding. We knew it was coming, but we didn't do much. We didn't communicate to the people. At the end of the day, the government will use 17 billion, and states just took the money and nothing happened. Some farmers got as low as 500 naira in Nigeria. Hmm? Some women farmers. So it, 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 it's a serious thing. Now, um, considering the fact that agricultural production in rural areas are, are mainly dependent upon weather variability and uh, weather forecast. Produced by you know most of these uh, bodies uh, like NIMET, uh, uh, somehow we we'll have been that the information being provided or being disseminated in rural areas uh, are being broadcasted by radio, for example, which is part of what uh, the suggestions are being uh, talked about uh, this uh, workshop. Uh, the information provided by radio remains generic and uh, limited to short-term you know information. Uh, what should be done to actually improve delivery of climate information services, especially? to local farmers. Yes, uh, thank you. Radio, television, these are just among channels that are available. The, ch the farmers have their own communication channels. You will go to communities and they tell you, once this information gets to the church, we will get the information. Once this information gets to the mosque, we will get it. Once this information gets to our, um, because farmers have associations, they have cooperatives. We have farmer-led extension. So different communities have things that works for them. Some, the information just needs to get to the headmaster of the school, and through the headmaster, children, the parents will have this. So there are different means. We just, first is to make this information available. Social media, for instance, there are companies in Nigeria that provide extension services because of the products that they are selling to farmers. That's also another means of getting, Bulk SMS in. So you have communities where if one farmer gets the information, the others will get the information. What is important is that that contact person must get timely 
effective information, information that is useful, not, not a general information, but an information that is specific to their immediate location, and also information about what to then do. Does it mean if I tell you that, oh, there's going to be a lot of rain tomorrow, so it means that if you had planned to apply fertilizer tomorrow, don't apply it because the rain will wash it up. If you have planned to use pesticide tomorrow, don't, the rain will wash it up. Farmers need this kind of information on a daily basis. That's how important it is. <laughs>